Hello, my name is Fusk. I made some utility tools for creating models in Rhino for laser cutting. I personally like to do work in three dimensions when making my designs. And so I made some tools for that. Let's just get into it. it is. And just gonna make some uh, boxes so we have something to put uh, intersecting. So, uh, what I have here are two solids. They are intersecting, as you can see. I am going to select and run one of my scripts. I'm going to use Grasshopper Player. Grasshopper is what I made the scripts in. It's part of Rhino. And the one I'm choosing right now is called Overlap Fingers. It takes a, some inputs. It takes inners. Don't mind the names, but they hopefully makes sense in, in, in a second. Uh, it takes multiple inners. We'll get into that. This will be our first. I'm going to press enter. It is now added to a list. The list you can't see, but nevertheless, it's going to ask you, is there more? Because it can take multiple inputs. When the way of communicating to Grasshopper player that you're, that you're done, but adding to the list is pressing enter with nothing selected. Now it's going to uh, ask you for a singular out, which is going to be this one. And this is the result. Hopefully this is what you were hoping for. Uh, these are intersecting uh, fingers. Yes. The process is uh, a bit slow when you have to write graspable player, do everything. Uh, what I have set up is just having uh, keyboard shortcuts for it. Uh, so we have this one. Grasshopper player, whatever uh, your path to the Grasshopper file is, works. Two things you need to know. You need a dash in front of the Grasshopper player. And I usually put quotations around the file. I think it's especially important if there's a space. Uh, and then I can press uh, my control Q in this case, and can select uh, the inners, press enter, select the outer. And, and now I saw me not following along. That's actually pretty good. Uh, I'm going to do it again. It's going to ask for inners. I'm going to select this, press enter, press enter again because it's still asking for inners. And then select my outer. If you have uh, solids already selected when you run the command, it's going to add it to the list. And again, you won't notice, but it was selected. I pre run the, ran the command and now I press enter, I can press the out. That is my uh, usual workflow. Um, when I say it can add multiples, I can do it the other way around. I select the sum, press enter, and then select my outer. So hopefully this is what you're looking for when making overlap fingers. Yeah. Uh, so the next command of interest is the lay grasshopper player gonna go find lay it's also gonna ask for some geometry um, so i'm gonna select these press enter again it takes multiple little inputs so you have to say i'm done by saying pressing enter with nothing selected uh, you can see the outline of what it's gonna do this is grasshopper playing uh, grasshopper just uh, making a preview, I'm going to press enter. And for now, it actually deletes the original one. Uh, I might change that. But nevertheless, uh, it is uh, reversible. So uh, uh, this is what you would want. Uh, if I want to print this very nice angle uh, I just made, I uh, do whatever I do in, uh, what's it called, Rhino to export to my 3D laser program. I usually do vector PDFs. Uh, there is other videos I'm assuming on how to do this. I at least found out some way. One thing to always remember is uh, that one. Always set the scale to one to one. But yeah, it's more about the tools. So not getting into this. You can of course write me if you want some input on that. <coughs> Excuse me. This is lay uh, the tool. There is. Yeah, let's not get into the details on uh, the other ones and that. Um, 
there are more tools that could be of interest. Let's just uh, let's say we do a oh, one thing that is worth knowing about the overlap fingers uh, is that you don't need it to be. Uh, on a corner case like this, if I wanted something like inside here, it still works. I run the command, it asks me for inners, something was selected, I press enter, press my outer. So now this fits in here. Um, and in this case, I would probably go the other way around. So like this, so now it fits better. But this is more of a, how do you design laser cut stuff? Lots of people know more about that than me. That's maybe a, a general thing. Nevertheless, I um, wanted to show off another one because over fingers are good for a lot of things, but there are also a couple of things it can't do. A uh, good example is here now. I'm making a nice sorting box, it looks like. And I'm going to run my command. Gonna Put it down here so now see so i selected everything and everything now goes into that and as i've said it can take one uh, input as the out which means i will have to do repeat this process because i've not oh smokes there we go not been able to figure out how to do multiple ins and out uh, i am still fairly new at this uh, and oops, this was wrong. That, that, and no, ah, it's because I'm. Yeah, that's uh, what it does. It tries to intersect with something that is not intersecting, then it just deletes everything. Uh, okay, gonna do it. Hopefully, right this time because it's this one I want to intersect. Oop. But this is now weird because I select multiples, I select the other one. It, of course, makes this one the inner, which makes this one the outer, and then kind of, well, it sticks with this look. So let's stick with that for now. I'll go with the reverse in a second. The thing we have is this one. Uh, let's uh, isolate these two guys in the middle, and look at them. If I were to run my nice script on this. This looks perfectly nice, right? And this looks nice, but there's just no way of putting it together. Um, yeah, you know, physics is a house mistress. So instead, I have created a script. Press of the player in this case, we're gonna run half C's. Very pretty name. I already selected my inners, I now select my outers. It now looks like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, because you sometimes don't want this as a button, I have made a uh, crash of a player, house is reversed. Oh dear. Uh, crash of a player, let's go, house is reversed. And let's see. And did the same thing. Oh, it is because they are identical. <laughs> okay. Um, there are some cases where you want what part is on top, what part is on bottom. Uh, the script doesn't care about that um, as input, as when you run it, which, uh, which is in or out in this case. In this case, you would have to do it, uh, run the reverse script. And I'm just going to show everything again. I made a tool, and you might have noticed I forgot to, to actually run the Hapsi script now, but that is a bit on purpose because I've made another tool. Grants of a player, solid intersections. It does uh, what it says on the tin, it checks for solid intersections. Uh, if you're following along in the graph, it says zero first, don't mind that. That's the second line that's important. It has one solid intersection. So all the things I had selected had one intersection of something. Um, when it says more than, uh, if it doesn't say zero, zero, it means I have something. 
uh, if I have something I want to see what it is, it is still <coughs> in the midst of running the script. So if I now do the same as before, press enter without having anything selected, uh, and voila, something shows up. I'm gonna see, this is where I have a solid intersection, and rightfully so, because these two are intersecting. Uh, let's just get rid of this. And that's what the player have sees, and the other one. And let's see. Oh, did I do this correct? Uh, don't mind that. Let's do it again. Press of the player, half six, enter, and then the other one. L lovely, because we of course wanted this to be purple. Ah, oh, there we go. So uh, again, I'm totally ready to go and cut this. So I select everything. Um, I do run my solid intersection before I do anything else. It says zero zero, which is, means we're good. And then I, don't, I just press escape to not run the rest because there's no reason to calculate making zero boxes. Um, select everything and I run my lay file. As you see, I've set most things up as um, shortcuts. I find it convenient. And here you go. Ready to be cut. In Rhino, they are grouped. So these small holes are grouped with the rest, which is nice. Um, they are not, as far as I know, when you export them, uh, this is lost when turning them into PDFs. So there might be a smarter way of doing that than I'm doing. All right. Um, I think let's uh, eat this. Uh, over here and go see what else we have. We have half season houses reversed. We have lay optimized. All right. If I do that one, uh, hopefully it is complex enough for you to see. Yeah. Now I start calculating. Um, the optimized version just runs more iteration on how to optimize where this lies. Um, and this might be a good occasion to go look at. Oh, let's just run it. Sadly, it runs this twice. I've not figured out a way to just accept, bake the preview, and then that's it. So, but if I go to Grasshopper uh, and show you files, they are all in the repository. They are here. I will hopefully link to them. All right. Um, recent files lay. In this case, we want to see. Yep. It won't show me. I just, there we go. It's of course red because there's no input, but uh, yeah. So this is a script. If you <laughs> want to see the different layer optimize, it is the same script. It just has uh, runs more iterations. When you're running lay for the first time, it might ask you to download and install open nest. It's not part of Rhino, but it's made by someone who do nesting. So pretty clever. Um, more iteration means better chance of optimizing uh, where they end up, so you lose as little space as possible. Uh, or, yeah, you optimize how these are placed. Um, I wouldn't do it for something as simple as this, but it has been convenient for other type of things. Um, the thing is set up by plates. Uh, these fit in for the sheets that I am printing. Uh, so you might want to adjust these. These are in millimeters. Um, and how big they, yeah, how, how big the plate is uh, goes in here uh, if you need to change that, which you might. Um, so, and of course, if there's st stuff like this that you that doesn't make sense or the script is not working, you can write it on the repository. Um the player. What was interesting? I hope I didn't go off on a tangent here. Uh, yeah, that was uh, optimized. Yeah, it takes longer. Yeah, but it is more optimized. And um, so 
uh, living hinge we're not going into now but i do want to quickly cover uh, reversed um, gonna stop talking because as you can see i can't figure this stuff out when i'm talking promised him to cover the what is the inner word and it is you have probably guessed it overlap fingers i've selected something to start with i am now so the first thing i selected was the inners which means these are on the inside this one starts on the outside um, and as mentioned uh, i can have multiple of these but uh, I did find it useful to make a reverse one of these. Uh, have command for it, but let's do it from grass over player. Over that finger is reversed. I had two things selected. I, uh, let's do that again because then you can follow along in the command line. Over that finger is reversed. Select my outers. Dun, dun, press enter. Then I add it to that list. I press enter again. I now select my singular in. As you see, these are now on the outside. These start on the outside, the fingers. Um, I found it very useful uh, to have both because we right now can't select multiples of one. So I think that is everything. Uh, yeah. Okay, there's the living hinge, but I'm not covering that. Um, all right, best of luck.